Ah, what a way to start the day, but with a, the stink of feet. What's up guys, Freeman here, welcome back to another video. So, um, you guys know what it's like when you, when you have an old ass car and you spill water in it and you don't notice and then all of a sudden the whole place stinks of feet because all the foot smell has just been soaked up like throughout the years and then for some reason the water just like expands about in care because it smells like my feet. Um, I ain't picking it up, no chicks in it. <laughs> so today I wanted to talk about something that was the accumulated wisdom that I've gleaned over the years, um, especially when it comes to the phenomena of parasites and candida, because as this video is going out, I will have been uh, restarting officially my quitting, sm quitting smoking and drinking, or when I say quitting, I mean limiting and uh, basically going through a little bit of a mini cleanse uh, le leading up into a juice fast, which I'll start posting on next week. I did also try this beforehand, but I decided why not make it like a thing? Why not make it like a vlog? Because as I alluded to in, in another video that I think I put out on my other channel, my entire flat is a mess because all the windows are being redone so I don't freeze to death in winter. And I should have said no. I should have pushed forward the date because these last two weeks were a holiday for me, actually. Well, I didn't have to go to my, to my, to my main job and I could just detox. And I thought, hey, let's, let's, let's get the windows done as well. And it turned out to be an absolute cluster F because my flat, it's, 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 a, it's a big flat, but I have a lot of, not stuff, but like furniture and stuff and like moving it and reorganizing it and people. And considering the fact that I like, that, I, that I'm at home for like the other half of my life, it's like, what the hell do I do? It's like, so the, the added dis the disruption made it a bit difficult. But I'll be restarting this challenge and I want to be talking about one of the biggest insights that I'm going to be going into this challenge with for. And this is really the accumulated, this, this, this took me ages to figure out because for the longest period of time, I have been fighting, battling, at war with, struggling with um, candida, gut dysbiosis, parasites, this, this, this that and the other. And uh, if anyone thinks, oh, that's disgusting, that's not me, it, like 90% of people also have the same. For example, do you have sugar cravings? Do you have random cravings for like specific foods? Do you have any of the, any of the 100 million symptoms that freaking candida and parasites can cause like freaking insomnia and, and, uh, and uh, freaking mood swings and like all this and that. And, uh, and uh, do you also have an aversion to vegetables? I mean, like you don't, they, they feel disgusting to you. Chances are that's also parasites too, which is going to be interesting because I also want to do a video on leptins when I get all my stuff and equipment and my, my flat DF. I want to talk about leptins and plants and stuff like that and if, whether or not they're actually killing us. For a long period of time, I freaking wanted to eradicate them. I wanted to eradicate them and I, I spent tons of money, did tons of cleanses, did this, that and the other and they worked you know, to an extent. And uh, well, no, they, they all worked. The only thing for me was that um, it was just staying consistent to a healthy diet, but that goes into the, the emotional side of it. Um, and you know, I had it on backwards. I had the whole thing on backwards because there was, um, okay, so what, what, what sparked this off was there was a, oh, I wish I, Future Free Man put up the name of the little score. I think it's PCAS score, not Pikachu. Or picture, I don't know what it is, Free and Future put it up there. Essentially, what this is, is that you can take a picture and you can, you can, no, not a picture, you can look at the overall health of a plant. I think it's Pika score. And um, that will basically determine whether or not it's healthy or not, whether it will grow and, 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, this, that, and the other. And what they found was that bugs and pests always go for unhealthy plants. If the score was too low, what you would find is that very, very specific pests and, and organisms would eat and break down the plant. But then when it was high, pests wouldn't touch it. If you have a pecan tree in Georgia or uh, Northern Florida here, and a fall webworm uh, is interested in it, she will come lay her eggs and they will lay their eggs, the caterpillars will come out and they will start eating the plant because it's considered to be uh, edible uh, to the fall webworm. If the plant uh, is able to produce enough plant secondary metabolites and uh, get its bricks level up, uh, they will lose interest in the plant and all of the fall webworms will collect in a clump at the end of the branch. They will be mere inches uh, away from a healthy pecan leaf and they will remain there for several days. Over the course of several days, they will starve to death and one by one, they will start falling off of the tree. 
This is why there's this big movement of, well, this is why organic gardening is a thing, but there's also like rejuvenative gardening. I think that's the name of it. But essentially, we don't need pesticides. This may be a, a shocker for a lot of people, but any old creature, insect, can't just eat any old plant. And I just mean any plant, because insects eat specific plants. Um, but they, they can't just eat any of the same, any of the plant that, that, that they like. Some of them they go for, and some of them they don't. Now, what they found was that if the score was really high, if that insect was to eat that plant, the insect would get sick and probably die. This is, this is because the plant had the ability to manufacture its own self-defense mechanisms to kill any pests. So, of course, the pests would learn, oh, this plant is too healthy, we're not going to eat this thing. So, essentially what it is, is, and this is kind of a meta way of looking at it, if you, when you're really unhealthy, <clears throat> when an organism is too unhealthy, it's almost as if the balance of nature begins to break it down. And it breaks it down to the point whereby it, all, all of its resources can be reused so that hopefully the next time some other organism or the same plant or whatever can grow into a healthy side. It's almost like nature saying, well, this didn't work. Let's scrap the whole thing and, you know, start again. And this applies to the human body as well because candida is a fungus that primarily eats sugar and carbohydrates. Now, it's also theorized that candida is one of the main things that helps break us down when we die. And uh, this is evidenced by people who die from like extreme, people who die from uh, candidiasis. It's actually quite disgusting. There are some accounts of like cadavers, like you poke the skin and like your, your finger breaks through and all this like white smoke, which is candida spores come out. That's extreme cases, but that's what's happening to you underground uh, when you start to break down. It's probably not just one thing, but that's what's happening to us when we're eating all of this junk food. And what, what I realized is that the candida isn't actually attacking you because the body has a symbiotic relationship with these organisms. The body says, okay, you've dumped a pizza full of canola oil or rapeseed oil, which completely destroys your gut lining and m removes your ability to absorb nutrients. It is one of the worst oils on the planet, which is why it used to be called canola oil. It wasn't called canola oil because people managed to br blow the lid on how it was the most toxic oil on the planet. And so they changed it to rapeseed oil and it's really healthy now. And it's in all, it's in all your health drinks. And it's, it's, you know, I, I love ruining people's, <laughs> people's regimens. So essentially the body when you eat all these toxins, the body needs these organisms to break it down, otherwise it will get sick. These organisms are saving your life and improving the quality of your health so that you don't have to process all these things. And, and one of the things that I, another insight into this, and I'll, and I'll explain like, well, why do we die? Why do we get sick? And I'll, I will explain all that. Um, when I, I have a way of completely deactivating any and all parasites and stuff in the gut so that if I do want to go out and eat junk food and you do, and I do have a sensitive gut, I won't get inflamed. Now, the thing is, is that there was a time when I was doing a cleanse and I decided, oh, you know what, it's been like a week or so, let me have some whiskey and, you know, and, you know this and the other. Now, I accidentally went, went around drinking the same level of whiskey that I did before the detox, which is a mistake I always do, which is the only time I ever get hangovers. And um, I was like, oh, let me take this thing to deactivate the parasites and so the moment I did I you know I, I didn't feel any sort of discomfort but then immediately I got a headache and so this was all the way through drinking and then I take this thing and then immediately I got a headache and what this was is because the parasites are there they're soaking up all of this alcohol they're soaking up all of these chemicals they're soaking up all of these toxins and when you get rid of, this is why, for example, big fat guys or maybe small fat guys on the inside can eat a ton of junk food and not get quote unquote like flawed. Whereas healthy people, they're like glass, <laughs> you know, like they're, they're like, they're like, they don't, there's a reason why they're like, oh, I'm going to stay away from them. Because when your body is so adjusted to eating the right things, when you eat the wrong things, your body isn't used to it. It doesn't have all the other uh, mechanisms in place. It, it, it's, it has to, it has to like throw it, it has to throw a grenade into the basement of, of, of its insulin production, which is a terrible analogy, just to get everything started. So it's a chaos. And most importantly, it doesn't have all of the microorganisms that would break down that sugar. This is one of the roles that Candida, I keep picking on Candida, that's, that's kind of a 
Candida and Parasites play is that they have the ability to soak up all of this stuff so that it doesn't mess up the body. Now, why is it such an issue then? And why is everyone saying that, that we should attack it? Because when you get rid of these parasites and candida, you feel amazing. Maybe you've had brain fog, maybe you've had insomnia, maybe you've had uh, emotional issues, maybe, maybe, you've, maybe you've had random itching, maybe you've had eczema, this, that and the other. Oh my God, I've done this cleanse and it's gone. Um, this is great. Oh my God, these things are, are evil. They're, they're doing all these horrible things to us. But the thing is, is that what you'll notice if anyone's done any sort of a like a, a, a cleanse or, or something is that they come back like that. And the reason why they come back like that is because we're still feeding them. They're still playing an essential role. And we think, oh, they're coming back to evil. We must keep killing them. What we don't think about is why don't we just stop feeding them? Why don't we just stop giving, like, giving them a job, <laughs> essentially? As long as we keep providing them with the source of crap, essentially, they will keep coming back to clean up that crap so that we don't have to internalize it. Now, the problem is, is that because the body has to outsource it to a very aggressive organism that wants to survive as well, if we keep eating this stuff, that's when we die. That's when we get really sick because there's only a certain, there's a very delicate balance of how much the body can take all of these pathogenic organisms. And it's almost in the contract. Is that like, look, I will please help me with this. Um, and then the pathogenic organisms say, yeah, sure, but there's no cutoff point. And the body's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Because the body's like, yeah, well, the mind isn't stupid enough to eat this stuff. I mean, this is clearly garbage. I'm dying on the inside, but you know, the mind after being, <laughs> in our current culture keeps eating it and <clears throat> so eventually the body loses the arms race with all of the toxic chemicals and all the toxic ingredients and all the toxic byproducts that these organisms create like uh, lipopolysaccharides which is basically bacteria poop which is the cause of like all the stuff that's wrong when you have these pathogenic organisms is lipopolysaccharides parasites same thing they they eat and they poop in your body which is why you feel like crap and that's the majority. I'm, I'm sorry to say this. This is the majority of mankind. No, the majority of Western mankind. I'd say. I'm not sure about the rest, but the majority of of Western mankind has serious issues with this, simply because they've disrupted the balance. They they haven't given their bodies enough time to be able to recover and for the organisms to leave. Now this is the thing. When you start, you don't need to take parasite, anti-parasite, coconut oil, anti-candida stuff. You actually don't, unless it's an extreme case, like someone who's really ill. The best thing to do is just stop feeding them and they will literally leave. Now, there are a few difficulties with that because all organisms want to survive and so they want to incentivize you to keep eating the food to make them survive. That's not because they're evil. All the organisms in your body are doing that. Like, it, like you can get a kid to love vegetables by giving the kid sauerkraut juice, by making her a sauerkraut and then giving, um, then having the kid drink a bit of sauerkraut juice and then again, it will uh, colonize the gut with bacteria that love breaking down vegetables. And all of a sudden the kid wants vegetables. Oh my God, I wanna eat this. I wanna, I wanna give me broccoli, give me this, give me that. You know, I, I, oh, I could sit, I just, I love boiled sprouts. I will just boil a whole packet of sprouts and just snack on it like throughout the day. To me, it's delicious. Before it was horrible, but you know what? Before I had a crap diet. Before I was eating junk food, before I was eating the standard Western diet, which is why I hated vegetables. This also goes into the whole autism and also a bit into the carnivore thing because uh, a lot of one of the arguments for carnivore is that kids don't like vegetables, therefore ki and kids are intelligent and we should listen to kids. It's like, yeah, well, a kid will walk into a sh sweet shop and if it has unlimited money, will literally eat itself to death. So it's like, it's not usually like the best thing to just trust the kids instincts, but what you'll find is that because of the gut dysbiosis, because of the imbalance in, in the gut flora and fauna, it's almost impossible to get the kid to eat the right things, which is why autistic kids, they just love sugar. They just want carbs. They just, they, like there's like, depending on what kind of autism it is, they're almost always going to have gut dysbiosis. Show me an autistic child and I will show you someone who has gut dysbiosis. It's almost impossible to not have one or the other. And I don't mean one or two symptoms. I, it, I hate the term, it's so difficult. But you can, you can condition yourself to eat any food that you want. You don't have to force yourself to do it. You just have to get, put in the probiotics to eat it. And the probiotics will send a message to your brain to say, oh, hey, let's eat this food. And so that's what's happening with, uh, with uh, candida and parasites. Your cravings are not your own. 
your cravings are not your own. And this is one of the ways that I don't beat myself up about it that much because it's like, why do I want these things? It's like, I, I don't, like I, I literally don't. It's, it's this craving that's been created within me. It's fine, it's not harmful, it's just there. It's gonna have to watch it like some, radi listen to it like some radiator, like some air conditioning unit in the background it just becomes a background harm and then you meditate, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so they're, they're trying to survive. And so unless we're armed with the knowledge that our cravings are not our own, and unless we have the discipline to be able to say, okay, I'm going to slowly take out the bad things and slowly put in the good things, or do like me and literally just like do everything in like a week and feel freaking amazing in like a week, while enduring an entire week's worth of torture and insanity that I would not inflict upon anyone. But that's just me because I'm extreme. I'm extreme. I'm the kind of person who will do like long ass fasts and then nearly kill yourself with like a 10 day water fast afterwards. Like, don't be me, please. Uh, unless you really want to fix your issues really quickly, in which case, I mean, good luck. Because you've got 10 years of learning. <laughs> um, but it's like, but it's like, once you, once we put this back, they literally leave. We don't need to kill them, they leave. They say, oh, there's not enough food here, they leave. Once we change this attitude from killing to I'm just going to stop feeding them and even feeling grateful, I'm actually to the point where I'm grateful to them because without them, I'd be a lot sicker. Believe it or not, this is a big mind twist for me. Without the very things that I was trying to kill off all my life, I'd be a lot sicker because I cannot take care of myself, apparently. I need their help to break down all these toxins. You need their help because it's not your, it's not 100% your body that's dealing with all the crap that we're putting in ourselves. It's not, it never was. It's these organisms that we think are harmful that are fulfilling a crucial role of absorbing these things. If not for candida, you would feel so sick when you ate that muffin, or when you ate that pizza, or when you ate that muffin, that pizza, that beer, on that long ass night where, that, where, where then you wake up the next day and say, ha ha, I feel great, yeah, my body's amazing. And then there's all these bacterial um, organisms that are breaking that down for you. It's them, they deserve just as much credit as your iron liver does. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm not sure how long this video's gone on for and I'm really cognizant of time because I know that people don't care about long videos. Um, so yeah, it's currently day one. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna post a new video uh, every, an update every two days. What I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on doing, because Christmas dinner's coming up for the family and for work. Um, so there's no way I can, I can last that long. So I'm gonna give you two, two weeks of just normal diet, um, so just quitting smoking and drinking, and I'll be talking more about the, the stuff that I'm doing to massively reduce my cravings. And I'll also be not be detoxing so hard because I, I, I'm, I'm getting like weeks worth of progress in like days, but I'm wrecking myself in the process, which is why I have not slept properly in like the last few days because I keep waking up and um, doing something. Um, <laughs> Because I keep waking up and then having to use a toilet and, you know, getting rid of all this crap and then literally and then just like, I just not being able to sleep. Uh, but then afterwards, I'm going to be going on to a week long juice fast uh, after that. So stay tuned to that ending, hopefully right before the Christmas dinner stuff starts. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, it was really mind blowing for me because like the world isn't a, the world isn't attacking you. You know what I mean? Like, the reality is not an attack. The, the things that we think are bad for us, this is like metaphysical. It's all you, it's all you in another form. And nothing really, and you think, oh, well, it's trying to hurt us physically. It's like, we're all one. Okay, this is too much. Peace. 20 minutes. Oh my God.